Lord is with you. And also with you. And the microphone will be on in a moment. Are we good? Yeah. Okay. As we begin worship this morning, of course, in this nation, we are keenly aware that September 11th is a date, well, that in some ways will live in infamy, and yet we do not despair. Let us pray. God of grace and God of glory, on this anniversary of the terrorist attacks of 9-11, as we enter into a time of worship, grant us the wisdom to remember the lessons from that tragic day that make us more hopeful, more life-giving, more Christ-like. Drive away from us any vengeful urges any hate-filled sentiment, any whisper from within or without that goads us to return evil for evil. As the world still heaves with violence and war seems never to end, assure us, O oh God, that ultimately crying and mourning will be no more. In the midst of suffering, our own and that of the world. Speak again, Creator God, your word of life and its goodness. When we mark anniversaries of sorrow together or alone, may they be occasions to discern what truly matters, let go of what really doesn't, and recognize your grace, almighty God, that pervades it all. In the name of Jesus, the light of the world, the Prince of Peace, the Good Shepherd, our friend and our helper, we pray. Amen. Amen. Good morning, Mountain Shadows Presbyterian Church. Good morning. And good morning to those who are worshiping with us via Zoom, that we include Freya and Jane and Lynn and Madeline and Connie and James and Elaine and Karen and Ginny. And how about a louder uh, message of good morning from the people in the sanctuary? Good morning. <laughs> and to those who will be worshiping with us in this services recorded format via Zoom, blessings on you whatever time of day it may be. I would like to draw to your attention that uh, things change and sometimes even get better after we print the bulletin. So, as I think you know, masks are not required but optional at this point. And, as ever, we invite you, if you haven't taken a chance to do so already, to silence your mobile phone to locate on a seat near the center aisle one of these red attendants registration pads and note on it that you're here and then send it down your row and back again so that you may note the names of those with whom you are worshiping this day joseph and we're going to do our ritual handing over of the pad to you and if you're comfortable doing so those of you who may be new among us will have an, uh, an opportunity to introduce yourselves or be introduced in a moment or two but let me first point out to you that fall office hours at Mountain Shadows Church will begin effective tomorrow, Monday through Friday, 9 until 1 p.m. We can welcome Judy Leonard, our office manager, back this week. And now I'd like to invite Suzanne Pennington, our elder for mission, to offer an announcement. Well, good morning, Mount Shadows. I just want to tell you about a party that we are invited to, and the RSVP is, is due a little bit sooner than um, we had to put in the usual way to announce things, so here I am telling you about it. So there's a celebration 
uh, for the anniversary, 65th anniversary of the Southside Worker Center. Southside Worker Center is part of Southside Presbyterian Church, and we support Cross Streets Ministry, as you know. Um, this Worker Center was established in 2006, and it's a safe space for day laborers to gather together and meet potential employers. Uh, the center is celebrating, like I said, its 16th birthday. It's going to be on October 6th. I'm sorry, October 1st on Saturday, October 1st from 6 o'clock to 9 o'clock in the evening. Um, the reservations are due in a couple of weeks, so we will have a sign-up sheet already out there. Uh, it's $25 a seat. If you'd like to make a donation, um, because you can't come, but you'd still like to support them, you can just leave a check there in the envelope, and there's directions on the sign-up sheet on who to make the check out to, there, you can also go to their website if you'd like more information about the Worker Center. Um, we serve breakfast to a lot of those workers on Mondays and Fridays, as well as our own unhoused neighbors in the area around Southside. So I think that's everything I need to let you know. Thank you. Thank you, Suzanne. And <laughs> thanks for reminding us that there are sign-up sheets for ways to get involved in Mountain Shadows and its ministries to the community. So during the time of refreshments after worship under the Ramada, go ahead and sign up for what you're called to get involved in. Now let me ask, I know that there are um, some new friends and visitors in our midst this morning. Ginny Durant made a, an exuberant point, although she is unable to be with us in worship this morning, to let me know that Vic and Zenda Serendaria yeah. <laughs> are here worshiping with us for the first time this morning. Zenda and Vic, it was a pleasure to just greet you a little bit earlier and welcome to worship this morning. We also know morning. two other people, Ron and Rose. <laughs> it works. Your name works. <laughs> and I am tickled that my friend Sage Lewis is worshiping with us. And actually, Sage and I, though we've known each other for a couple of years, have only met off screen for the first time this morning. You are three dimensional, <laughs> and I have to say that. It's so am I, and welcome. It is very good to have you here. I wonder if there are others we might meet and greet and say hello to for the first time. Linda Walker, to whom would you introduce us? How lovely. And say your name again for me. It's Janine Almond. Janine Almond, it is a pleasure to welcome you here and thank you for connecting with Wayne and family. Blessings. Is there anybody else we might meet and greet for the first time this morning? With that, then, let us continue in our worship of God. <laughs> response and call to worship. When the lost are found, 
there is joy. When hope overcomes despair, there is joy. When we seek and find God's faithfulness, there is joy. Praise to God, who is present to us through Christ Jesus. Praise to God, who is present to us through one another. Amen. confession with empty hands and open hearts let us go to God in prayer and become refreshed to follow Jesus in love and service to the Lord let us pray loving God 
We are here because you invite us, see us, come to us, and embrace us. We are here because as a shepherd leads a lost sheep, you see us when we are lost. As a woman rejoices when she finds a lost boy, you rejoice when we are found. May each of us become aware of how we may have lost our way. May each of us sense that it is you, O oh God, searching for us, welcoming each of us to receive your healing mercies and loving us. Lord, hear our prayer. Like a waterfall that flows down a mountain, O oh God, your faithfulness and love flow into our lives through Jesus Christ. Amen. when we leave this place. The brokenness of this world will be healed and turned to love and hope. Grateful for God's saving grace, may we live as faithful disciples, cherished members of the body of Christ.
scriptures this morning from a translation called the Common English Bible, and the first comes from the Gospel according to Luke. All the tax collectors and sinners were gathering around Jesus to listen to him. The Pharisees and legal experts were grumbling, saying, this man welcomes sinners and eats with them. Jesus told them this parable. Suppose someone among you had 100 sheep and lost one of them. Wouldn't he leave the other 99 in the pasture and search for the lost one until he finds it? And when he finds it, he is thrilled and places it on his shoulders. When he arrives home, he calls together his friends and neighbors, saying to them, Celebrate with me, because I found my lost sheep. In the same way, I tell you, there will be more joy in heaven over one sinner who changes both heart and life than over 99 righteous people who have no need to change their hearts and lives. Or what woman, if she owns 10 silver coins and loses one of them, won't light a lamp and sweep the house, searching her home carefully until she finds it? When she finds it, she calls together her friends and neighbors, saying, celebrate with me because I found my lost coin. In the same way, I tell you, Joy breaks out in the presence of God's angels over one sinner who changes both heart and life. And a reading from Paul's first letter to Timothy. I thank Christ Jesus our Lord, who has given me strength because he considered me faithful. So he appointed me to ministry, even though I used to speak against him, attack his people, and I was proud. But I was shown mercy because I acted in ignorance without faith. Our Lord's favor poured all over me, along with the faithfulness and love that are in Christ Jesus. The saying is reliable and deserves full acceptance. Christ Jesus came into the world to save sinners. And I'm the biggest sinner of all. But this is why I was shown mercy so that Christ Jesus could show his endless patience to me, first of all. So I'm an example for those who are going to believe in him for eternal life. Now, to the king of the ages, to the immortal, invisible, and only God, 
May honor and glory be given forever and always. Amen. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Let us pray. May the words of my mouth and the meditations of each of our hearts be acceptable in your sight, O God, our rock and our redeemer. Amen. Recently, Ken, my husband, and I were spending time with friends who have a cabin in the woods. And they have been given the gift of a bow and an, an arrow, a quiver full of arrows, and a target. Hmm. Now, when I watched last year's Tokyo Olympics on TV, the one that was supposed to happen in 2020, I'd seen some world-class archers doing their thing. They made it look easy so easy to hit the mark that I wasn't all that impressed with their skill. I, th I thought, how hard could it be, you know? You pull the bow, you pull back the string, you aim the arrow, you hit the target. Well, guess what? <laughs> Archery is hard. When I took my turn at it, I learned the bow is big and heavy, the arrow must be, I don't want to point at anybody, precisely <laughs> situated. Both of the archers' arms must be strong and still. Both of the archers' eyes must be acutely focused. And perhaps most important of all, the archer's mind must be purposeful and disciplined and calm if there's to be any hope of sending an arrow to its intended target. I did manage to shoot a couple of arrows into the general neighborhood <laughs> of the bullseye, but most of them landed wide of the mark. Now you might wonder why I'm talking about archery, and I promise there's a reason I will explain it, but not yet. First, I want to remind us that in today's gospel reading, Luke portrays Jesus as eating with so-called tax collectors and sinners. When Jesus overhears the Pharisees and the legal experts, that is the religious separatists and authorities, complaining about the company Jesus keeps, he tells two parables. He talks about people who lose precious treasures, a sheep and a silver coin. And these people conduct a thorough search to recover what they've lost. And then once they find the sheep and the coin, they throw a celebration to rejoice. In the same way, Jesus says, there will be more joy in heaven over one sinner who changes both heart and life than over 99 righteous people who have no need to change their hearts and lives. Jesus' unmistakable point is that God loves so-called sinners. God searches for and finds and embraces and rejoices over even one person who was spiritually lost, but then is found and transformed. In today's second reading, the Apostle Paul, by his own self-description, was, well, as the traditional language would have it, chief among sinners, a lost soul who did great damage. In his letter to Timothy, Paul says, I used to speak against God, attack God's people, and I was proud. But I was shown mercy because I acted 
in ignorance without faith. Our Lord's favor was poured all over me, along with the faithfulness and love that are in Christ Jesus. The message of today's scriptures is this. God is gracious. God is kind. If you take away nothing else from this sermon, take that away. Through Jesus' all-inclusive welcome toward flawed and imperfect and broken and wounded and mistaken and sometimes damaging people, God's searching mercy, God's favor, is freely poured out. God's grace is poured out on you and on me and even on the people we love to hate. It's the grace of God that heals and transforms hurting, hurtful human beings. Amazing, unconditional, lavish, limitless, loving grace from God restores the souls of people whose behavior sometimes falls scandalously wide of the mark. Wide of the mark, off center, out in left field, lost in the weeds. When, like an inexperienced archer misfiring a bent arrow, we act in ways that fall short, far short, of God's and our own best intentions, we become what Jesus and the New Testament writers call sinners. And I know, I know, sinner is an S word. It's the S word nobody wants to be called. But stay with me, please. The New Testament was originally written in Greek. The Greek word for sinner is, and here's your Greek lesson for today, hamartolos. And do you know what image is at the root of the word hamartolos? An archer. An archer who misses the mark. Yep, the literal meaning of that biblical word for sin is to miss the mark or to forfeit by missing the mark. And that's why I was talking about archery. I wanted to plant in your mind the image of someone who tries but whose efforts fall wide of the mark. More often than not, a so-called sinner is someone who, like Paul, who, as he says of himself, acts in ignorance and without faith. Someone who, therefore, needs help, not hellfire. Someone who needs spiritual nurture, not shame and blame. Why, 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 when the grace of God is the big Christian takeaway, the message of God's loving kindness is the treasure at the heart of the New Testament. Why do we human beings so often focus on fear instead of forgiveness? on condemnation rather than compassion. Why, when, by God's grace, all fumbling archers who miss the mark will be forgiven, and all wounded people who cause others pain can be healed? Why do we so often bring down verdicts and wage wars to prove that wrongdoers will get not grace, not loving kindness, but the consequences they deserve. And why when we make mistakes and mess things up are we so quick 
to say to ourselves, I'm so stupid. There I go again. I think we're meaner to ourselves than just about anybody else. Why is it so hard to accept and to give other people the precious treasure, the silver coin, the grace of God that is at the heart of our religion? I think maybe it's because if you live by grace alone, then you have to admit there's a power at work in this world that is greater and gentler than any army, any judge, any jury, any embittered Sunday school teacher, any angry parent. If you live by grace alone, all you can do is surrender your schemes for payback and your self-improvement plans <laughs> and admit you're the lost sheep. I'm the lost sheep. I'm the lousy archer. You're the lost coin. And we can't find ourselves. We can't restore ourselves. We are wholly at the mercy of the God who is merciful beyond our ability to measure. We live in the reach and the embrace of the God who found you and me and all of us ages ago, the God who never lost us. If we live by grace alone, all we can do, and this is everything, because everything flows from this, is let ourselves, our beloved selves, be recovered and restored and made whole, mended and well by someone loving and kind, someone whose ways, mysterious though they are, never ever fall wide of the mark. To God be the glory. Amen. 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 <laughs>
a seat. We have received much from God, grace, mercy, abundance, the love of Jesus, and the gift of life itself. Let us now offer what we can as a way of saying thank you. In gratitude for God's generosity, let us make our offerings. so that together as a community of faith we may uphold each other where we need a little help and may rejoice together like those people in the Bible when they find what was lost. And of course always God hears the prayers we don't say out loud and knows them before we do. I'm sure we are all keenly aware of the historic passing of Queen Elizabeth II. The Presbyterians of the Church of Scotland and people of all and any faith the world over are working the end of an era, of a reign, of a woman of faith, a woman whose legacy of leadership carried with it History both quite honorable and sometimes problematic. We had a little thing called the Revolutionary War um, that was about freeing people from the reign of 
kings, and yet we honor her life and give thanks for it and pray for King Charles III and the people of the world and of the Commonwealth of the United Kingdom. I wonder what prayers you have on your mind and heart. Today, I'll start with those in the choir. Ed, let's hear from you. Uh, first, for my sister, Pat. Uh, she's having uh, heart trouble and all this other stuff, but maybe not heart trouble. We've, we've prayed for Pat before. We'll pray for Pat again and today. May she know God's healing mercies and be strengthened. Stevie. I joy and thanks for the medical profession who is led by the hand of God that I can sing again. Yay! <laughs> Thanks be to God for healing mercies and the restoration of your voice and of your health and for this choir. When do you all rehearse? Would that be Thursdays at 3 o'clock? Is everybody welcome? Everybody. <laughs> Blessings. Yes, Brian. Uh, prayers for my cousin Jeff Haynes lives on the island of Maui and Hawaii. And he suffers from ALS mm. and has so for um, over a year now. And um, things are at a, at a point right now where he really needs our prayer. And this is your cousin, yes. Jeff? Yes. And ALS is also known as Lou Gehrig's yes. disease, is that right? Yes. And so you are asking, Brian is asking for our prayers for Jeff as his health uh, faces even more significant challenges. May he know God's mercy and blessings. Suzanne, wow, there's a prayer for choir this morning. Um, we have a joy, you know, for Papago United Presbyterian Church has raised enough money for phase one of the renovation that we are helping contribute to. They got their grant, they found out maybe a week ago. So, thank you for lifting that up. Mountain Shadows made a generous gift of $15,000 to help Papago United Presbyterian Church, which serves folks on the Tohono O'odham Nation, uh, to raise money for the repair of their church's roof and other much, much needed repairs. Other congregations gave likewise and Seeing that, a granting institution said, well, let's give even more. And so, thanks be to God, the goal of phase one of that church renovation project has uh, been met. And uh, it'll start in November, the restoration. And one of these days, we're going to go down there and see what God has done. Thanks be to God. Yes, Kathy. Praise to God for another year. Oh, happy birthday. Is that what we're saying? Blessings on you. We're glad to report. Keep on keeping up. <laughs> but Dee. I hate to be a downer, but uh, this last six months have been rough. I've lost a loved one every month. Oh, geez. Six months, and now I'm getting a diagnosis that my daughter has breast cancer. So I'm talking to God and telling him that was a big mistake and uh, fix, fix the problem. So hopefully it will go away real quick. We caught it hopefully early, but I'm tired of this. What is your daughter's name? Denny. Denny. And so Mickey is asking God's people to be in prayer for Denny, diagnosed with breast cancer, and may the treatments she undergoes be effective and may this cancer be completely eradicated and may Denny be restored to wholeness and good health. Yes, Joy. Uh, flowers this morning are in honor of my mother's birthday on Tuesday. Iris. Iris, these flowers are for you because your birthday is Tuesday. Does anybody, do you want to say what kind of birthday? 96. 96. Oh. Be sure to take those flowers home. Thank you for dedicating them. Thank you for letting us know and letting us celebrate with you. Rachel? Yes. 
Speaking of, speaking of birthdays, <laughs> our pastor will be celebrating a birthday this week on the 15th. She won't be quite 96. <laughs> <laughs> to be Iris when I grow up. <laughs> but, but great thanks for you being here and, and for your life. Thank you. Thank you. I appreciate that very much. I'm grateful. I wonder if anybody in the Zoom room would care to share a joy or a concern. Lynn has something to share with us, so just one moment. We'll make sure that the people can hear you. Uh-oh, I think we might have frozen, but I don't know if that means we don't have sound. Shall I come back to the Zoom room in a moment? Yeah. I will come back to you, I promise. In the meantime, is there anybody on this side of the sanctuary? Yes, Elizabeth. Uh, this is a concern and a joy. Uh, my daughter, a friend of hers, went camping up on the mountain, and on the way back, it's a one-vehicle road. Uh, a vehicle met them and drove them to a in the place where you could tap. They kept going. It caused my daughter's pickup to go off the cliff and roll three times, which is horrifying. But the joy is they all survived. The friend and the dog, they're all recovered and doing fine now. Oh, my goodness. Yes. Thanks be to God for those protections that surrounded them. Thanks be to God, and oh my goodness, be still my soul, your soul. Okay, I think we've unfrozen the things in the Zoom room. So Lynn, would you like to share your prayer? Yeah. Okay. Uh, Tuesday, 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 Tues
And he said to me a few years back, Nana, this is really a sad day to have my birthday. And I said, Noah, you have made it a happy day because you have given hope to the world. Mm. So may those affected by 911 mm -hmm. feel prayers of love and care. And those that have been born on that and this day, <coughs> there are hope for the future. So may they be blessed. Mm. What is your grandson's name? Noah. 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 Well, there's a hopeful name for you. Yeah. <laughs> and blessings on him. And I knew his Nana. And on the hope that he and his generation carry. And prayers for all those who, who, who grieve on this day. Any other joys or concerns to be lifted up among God's people? What if there were a quiz and you had to remember it? <laughs> God remembers everything. And so even if we don't, we can be confident that our beloved creator, redeemer, sustainer, hears us. Let us pray. There is no need too great. There is no concern too small for you to address and care about, O oh God. There is no life that falls outside of the range and the sphere of your world encompassing grace which surrounds history and promises the future and touches all lives in between here and now and evermore. We thank you. We thank you for the elders among us. We thank you for Iris, who shows us nearly a century of living by your grace. And we thank you for Noah coming up at 16 and venturing ahead with hope, not just with sadness. We ask you to touch, O oh God, all lives, the young, the old, the in-between, to heal everyone who needs it, to uphold the hearts of those who are heavy, heavy burdened by too many sorrows. We ask you to walk with us on ordinary days, and we needn't ask because you do. It is we who forget, it is we who wander off, but always and every day you seek us and find us and show us the path we should follow. May we continue to keep our eyes focused where you would have us go. And even when we don't know where that is, may we trust that you abide and you know the path and it leads to goodness and fullness of life to blessing to service to joy let our prayers surround not only this congregation and its joys and concerns but the people of the world the people of our nation who remember and mourn yet have hope the people of the United Kingdom who mourn their queen yet have hope for a future. We pray all things for all beings in the name of Jesus, who taught us when we pray to say, Our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen.
grace, God's grace, has brought us safe this far, and grace will lead us home. Go forth in that faith, and now may the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit go with us all. Together, let God's people say, Amen. Amen.